All right, right where we left off, day 66, maybe, might be nighttime. Uh, let's continue with what I was doing. I need to restore my health, get a little armor, and we'll continue building my bridge. First things, oh shit! Oh, come on! Oh, look at that. Bloody friggin' hell. That's why they call them creepers. Holy shit! Ugh, teach me to leave my door open. Uh, I got a whole rebuilding bunch of crap to deal with. Well, I guess I don't really need more health now. <laughs> I need to move all my stuff anyway. This isn't how I wanted to do it, but I guess this will work. Freaking out of the blue. Here it was, oh, I'll just go get a little pork and uh, build some more armor. No oh, crap! Figures. Just when you think you got things good, a creeper comes along and makes fun of all the stuff you've built. <laughs> At least his explosion wasn't devastatingly massive or something. They take out my couple chests though, that sucks. Uh, thankfully I didn't seem to destroy anything in them. Like I said, explosions sometimes destroy blocks, but they don't... I guess because of the nature of chests that they uh, just dropped everything after the fact. So they didn't lose any of the stuff in it. But now I've only got five minutes to pick everything up and get it reorganized before the drops disappear, so... Looks like I'm alright. I think I got it all. I definitely lost some stuff though. Looks like... Yeah, I didn't... I, I lost some chests. Like, I only picked up one. Alright. Uh, well, while I sit here and rebuild... <laughs> it just reminds me of, you know... All the unexpected things that happen to you in a game you don't you know you run into them and you're like just out of the blue like what the hell was that where did it come from why did it happen I mean I guess it uh, even like goes back to like what I consider one of the greatest what the fuck moments in gaming history was uh, the death of Eris in Final Fantasy 7 you know it's like one of those oh my god what the hell they just killed off a main character I mean, cause you don't really see that in uh, very many games. Like, you know, um, it was either five or six had uh, a character or two die off. It might have been four, I don't remember, of uh, Final Fantasy. And uh, then they had uh, the one with whoever Tella was, and he turns like the stone, and then you've got the, your, the, um, oh god, I got the roof too. You've got the, uh, the kind of, like, sudden, oh, by the way, you know, this best friend that was your ally for a long time, he's suddenly the bad guy's henchman kind of surprises. It's like, um, I was playing, uh, Lunar, and, uh, if you haven't played it, it is truly one of the greatest epics. I do recommend the PlayStation version, uh, because it had all the, the Lunar Silver Story complete, because it had all the extra... Uh, anime footage that was laced in with the game, and it was just is a really epic, fun game to enjoy. So, I mean, if you like campy old school anime, uh, anime uh, RPGs, it's definitely worth a try. Um, but it's like there's got this moment where uh, I better, I guess, if you haven't played it, you might want to stop listening. I'm gonna have a little spoiler here. Um, there's this moment in it where. Uh, one of your main characters just sort of betrays you and goes and joins the enemy. And you're like, what the hell, man? Or, um... It's like, uh... I, I wouldn't call it the same level, but it's the kind of the thing when you... Like, in Final Fantasy X, when you find out that, uh... Your main character is just, like, a dream and he doesn't really exist. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? That's just some bizarre shit, man. <laughs> Who comes up with these stories? I don't know. 
bad part about uh, surprises is that, like, I want to talk about a lot of things, but then there's, like, so many games, if you haven't played them, I'm going to just, like, run the shit out of it. So, like, I should put, like, mega spoiler in the, uh, my tags and stuff, because I'm going to talk about some crap today. Uh, that was my cat jumping around acting weird. I don't know if that got recorded or not. But I'm not going to start over. <laughs> uh... I don't know, I guess I could just stick to 7. Everybody's played Final Fantasy 7, right? I mean, who hasn't? And if you haven't, it's your own damn fault. You're, you're just too late to the game here. You need to catch up and play the damn game. But, like, it's... Um, like, 7 is not the greatest game ever. Like, I know there's a lot of Final Fantasy fanboys that would, like, severely disagree with me. It had its moments, don't get me wrong, but it's got all sorts of weird plot holes and character flaws. But it, it does a pretty good job of the, the what-the-fuck kind of scenario, like, um, uh, I don't know, I, I think the biggest what-the-fuck was, you know, you know, our, uh, stereotypically black Barrett having the, uh, the white daughter that they don't explain until, like, you know, halfway through the first disc, and you're like, oh, that's why. You know, she's adopted. Okay, it makes a little more sense then. I mean, you have to assume such a thing, but she's just like stark albino white, and he's just like so black. So it doesn't make any sense. You're like, what the hell? Or, um, I don't know, the realization that, uh, that everything that Cloud thinks he is is a lie. I mean, his entire identity was like someone else's. And it's just like, that's gotta suck. It's like everything you are, you're you're not. Like your whole life that you, I mean, realize you only had these like visions of yourself of these grandeur for like you know the last two months. But it's just the that he gets so fucked up over his Mako exposure, Genova injection, to whatever that like it completely distorts his reality to the point where he's just. Uh, you know, mind fucked and doesn't know at all what's going on. So, it, it, you know, like, how do you just completely. I should explain real quick what I'm doing. Um, I'm setting up an automatic door system so that I don't have this issue in the future. What I'm laying down here are pressure plates, stone pressure plates. Uh, they uh, activate when you step on them. Clearly, I got show. I get showed. Um, any door attached within one block of a stone pressure plate, like you know, the block right next to the door, will trigger the door. So you step on the plate, the door opens. You step off the plate, the door closes. Pretty simple. Obviously, you don't want these on the outside of your home because a mob would come along, step on the plate, and it would open. <laughs> I'm glad you most mobs are pretty slow, but nonetheless, you still don't want them opening the door to get in. Which is why I also built the little tiny things there, the uh, the buttons. And I'm going to put those on the outside. And uh, I'm going to finish grabbing my supplies here, and I'll go show you that too. Because uh, you can use a button, it's the same methodology, within one block of the door, the, your block's directly connected to the door press the button and a button is a delay switch like um, you hit it it goes one two three and it pops back you know it's like you hit it door opens one two three door shuts and so it's it's a great way to prevent you know sudden death because <laughs> nobody needs that make sure nothing's out here real quick sneaky creepers We're going to make a lava moat all around the home <laughs> just to stop that stuff from happening. Okay. And we put door. Door. There we go. Door. Okay. So, door opens. Door closes. And put a button. And put a button. Ding. Take. Auto open, auto close. Way I can walk up, hit the button, door opens. You know, actually, um, if I'm gonna do this, see, it closes behind me. I should 
probably make metal doors finally. Um, unlike wood doors, a metal door cannot be opened. Like you can't. If, if you place a metal door, you can't right, walk up to it, right click, open your door. So it's um, what's the word? It's a uh, a great security measure uh, against neglectful players like myself that forget to shut their doors because you can't like open it and just leave it open you have to use switches levers buttons uh to or switches levers buttons or pressure plates or you know redstone torches will open them as well to uh maneuver it uh definitely not gonna get into redstone for a while uh stay away monsters um we will get into redstone someday in a future video. It'll probably still be several videos off. Because I don't really have a huge need for it in the way I build usually. Like, see, you can right click, right click, right click, left click, nothing. Press the button, door opens, door closes. Simple. It's functional. It works. And this way, you know, I can manually open the door from the outside with the buttons. And when I go in, the pressure plate will automatically make sure they close behind me. So now I never have to worry about doors being open again. So I'll get back to that. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Crazy shit that was unexpected. Final Fantasy VII. Um, uh, I think some of the more random things uh, that was just like, doesn't make any sense, that just happened is like uh, the extra character Yuffie. Like, the sequence of events you have to go through in the proper order of how to answer questions when you do encounter her to actually get her to join your party are kind of ridiculous. And it's like, I think I must have tried to get her at least a dozen times before, and I could never figure out what I was doing wrong, and I had to go and check a strategy guide. And <laughs> I don't know if that's intentional. I wonder how many people figure it out that you just can't like ever let the screen change. But uh, I didn't figure it out. But of course, I was also you know 13, I think, when it came out. And it was more or less my first RPG. Um, it wasn't actually my very first. My very first RPG that I was ever encountered like as a game was one of the RPGs on my top 10 must-play RPGs of all time, and uh, it's a, a uh, Super Nintendo game. Before we get that, check it out. Mushrooms! Look how they spread. Once they fill the room, I'll harvest. Yay! More mushrooms. Anyways, uh, best game I ever played, or best, uh, one of the best RPGs I've ever played, for the, it was for the Super Nintendo, and it was called Shadowrun. Um, if you're not familiar, Shadowrun is a, it's kind of like Dungeons and Dragons, except it's futuristic, like there's cybernetic implants, cyborgs, androids, whatnot. Uh, quick moment, I'll show you, I put up a staircase here, and got rid of that dirt one over there, so, staircase now, nice. And I put a door over here, so I have access to the, this level to get out here for, if I ever have to get out here for any reason at all, I don't know, maybe these torches burn out, I have no idea, but anyways, so Shadowrun is, it's the two, it's like a two-thirds D isometric shooter, basically, except it's got leveling mechanics, and, um, it's supposed to have, it does have a few, like, minor plot derivative points, like, it was, it's like the very first version of... Um, I, I want to say a game people might be familiar with, but then most people I know don't play high, the later games, so that may not be like games like uh, Mass Effect or um, maybe uh, uh, Knights of the Old Republic. If you ever played that, you know where you have like decision-based choices about how the game evolves. It didn't have a whole lot of them, but it did have a few, and it's just one of those kind of things where. It was fun. I mean, you leveled, and by the time you reached maximum level in the game, and it was like you almost become god in the game. It was kind of ridiculous. 
but it sort of fits into like the whole traditional like tabletop game scenario like when you just get so powerful you can do almost anything so it's, instead of I think instead of uh, building on my tunnel I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I'm gonna do with my uh, snow because uh, it's going to uh, people have been wondering and I'm gonna go ahead and show you where that's going <laughs> originally this was I was gonna build this in the north uh, where I'm building my now glass tunnel and I decided against it when I built the storage room it seemed more appropriate to keep this next to my storage room and I decided to do something more exuberant and extravagant in the north which is why it's going to be a long drawn out process and I'm building way out there so anyways uh, I'll show you here in a few minutes when I, when I start digging out I'll show you how I'm going to use it but Shadowrun was, was one of the great RPGs I think I've ever played. It was just, there was something about it. It just had that raw, old school vibe that made it so enjoyable. Like, there's just not enough games that are like that anymore, you know, that have that, that really enjoyable, wow, it was a fun game to play. And it had, it had some unexpected moments, little weird plot twists, and like, you start the game as a corpse. And you like sort of miraculously spring back to life, and uh, it just sort of evolves from there. And it's you know a neat little gameplay mechanic to just start out and you know you're in the morgue, <laughs> and you know you like come out of a body bag. And you're like oh, you scare them the uh, the attending or whatever they're called the people in the morgue the uh, the medical examiner. <laughs> uh, and you sort of like unvol unravel this mystery of like who tried to kill you and why, and it's just a great little jaunt, uh, jaunt, uh, jaunt, uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say, the word, just a great little stint of adventure, and it's, you know, one of those unexpected gems that just, like, amaze you when you're done, like, wow, that was really fun, interesting, for a game of its age, it still plays very well. And that's always a good sign of well-designed gameplay and story. And another one that seems similar is um, the second RPG I ever played in my life was Super Mario RPG, Legend of the Seven Stars. Uh, if you're not familiar, this is a Squaresoft uh, Nintendo mix, or Square, yeah, Squaresoft, not Square Enix. And it was built almost directly like a Final Fantasy game, but using, um, you know, Super Mario as the palette for the design. And you have your traditional, it starts out with a traditional save Peach from Bowser kind of thing, but it evolves quickly and becomes a much bigger story. And it's got that traditional Final Fantasy feel to it. So it's a lot of you know, little intrigues and plot developments and it's got interesting puzzles and gameplay mechanics and it's one of the few truly I think, enjoyable games I've played in a long time. And uh, so I, I definitely recommend that. It's like it's on my list of the must have, must play games. Uh, I got distracted from my initial point of like surprises, but I guess uh, it's just as good talking about uh, my must plays. Um, of course, when it comes to RPGs you must play, the very top of my list is the game Xenogears. And uh, don't mistake it for the horribly butchered offshoot called Xenosaga. Um, Xenosaga was, is the uh, continuation of the storyline, or I should say the precursor to the Xenogears storyline. Xenogears is like the finale, the ending side of the story. It's what happens like at the end of the, of the, the saga of uh, the game. So it's, uh, you know, not a very good, uh, I don't know, Xenogears was done by Namco and uh, they did their best but it just, it wasn't the same. If they had kept the same design style that Xenogears had, it probably would have been better. 
uh, like they wanted to tell a story, and what they should have done is just made an anime out of it, because Xenosaga ends up being like hours and hours of cutscene, because they're just telling so much story, and it was like, it was so ridiculous, I couldn't even get through the first installment of it. That and the gameplay it was just not great, it was just subpar, not super enjoyable, so, you know, it just, it had flaws, and... It was unfortunate, but uh, it's just kind of the way things go. But uh, Xenogears, Xenogears is that diamond in the rough, that oh my god, why is this game so awesome kind of thing. Like, it's truly one of the best things I think I have ever played. Uh, it has this most deep, intriguing plot line that deals with philosophy and religion and personal identity and it's got all these characters that have really well developed uh, personalities and backstory and it's just if you haven't played it you're doing yourself a disservice because it's just it's phenomenal there's nothing more exceptional to me than this game it's at the very top of my list. If I could only play one game the rest of my life, I would play that game over and over and over. That's how good it is. And it's just... You get everything you need out of a video game from it. It's just, it's so entertaining. I loved it. It was, it was the best game I've ever played. I, I can't, like, even begin to describe how awesome it is. Because you just... I mean, you start out with your foreboding dream sequence, right? Very cliche, you're in a small town, dude without his memory kind of beginning. So it starts out with this really generic, cliched start, which seems so, you know, familiar to RPGs in general. And then the snowball starts rolling. and. Your character gets slowly sucked into this global crisis. Uh, and I say crisis, I mean like, there's not something out to destroy your planet or anything. It's like you're not fighting some supreme evil. You're, what you're fighting is for like your own choice to exist because your entire world has been created and affected by this this power called Zohar, which they get into a lot in the Xenosaga series, but it's just like, you know, the, uh, it's basically the god of your game, like, it's, if you had a, a reality, and, you know, and it was based around religion, I mean, it would be your, your deity, this thing, and the game, you know, revolves around that, but it's like, it doesn't, okay, good, torches don't melt snow, well, not when they're blocks, anyways. Okay, so and it's just, it, it starts out slow and it built into it, and it's just the best progression of storyline I think I've ever encountered in a video game. And it, it's just, it's phenomenal. There's there's nothing better. If you want a really great RPG, play Xenogears. Uh, if you can't get past its dated graphics, uh, you can go fuck yourself. Because, you know, it's a th it's it's a 32-bit 3D world with sprite animations, uh, but battles include polygonal characters and uh, sprites, so it's kind of weird because you uh, fight in mechs and stuff too. In addition to uh, in addition to what am I saying? Uh, in addition to fighting on foot. Which was kind of what made it cool, because you had this double mechanic between foot battle and mech battle, and you could switch in and out mid-battle, which was kind of neat. Uh, well, eventually, once you to develop it, whatever. So. Here we go. Uh, looks like I'm close to the end here. As you can see, I gotta put a door in. And there we have it. I have an ice box. Well, a snow box, but cold storage. Uh, I think it's a little small. I'll probably come back in here and adjust it later, but uh, 
That's what it is. It's, that's what I was going to use it for. It's, uh, I, I store all my meats, vegetables, di uh, dyes, liquid products, down here, milks, things like that. I store them in my cold box just for uh, immersion factor. I like to keep that feeling like I'm actually sort of living in this world and it matters. Uh, I'll probably even build a toilet here somewhere eventually, even though there's like, you know, that'd be kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it's one of those things. So there we go. I now have a use for snow. I'm going to go ahead and smelt some more glass, and I'll get ready to uh, continue my build. Uh, like I said, I'm going to jump ahead and get almost all the way to the spire I built in the distance in the sea, and then I'll come back and start recording then for the next video. So, that way you don't have to watch me struggle with water the whole way. So, hope you enjoyed it and uh, found the stuff informative about all the buttons and switches. And, and I will see you next time. Uh, so, goodbye. And uh, keep yourself safe because you never know when something's going to come along and destroy everything you've got. Friggin' evil creeper bastards. Alrighty. I love this. It makes it so much easier now, too, to back away door closes. Alright, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, ooh, sunrise. It's a good place to end. Bye!